hi, it's me again. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to go through some of my, my next shelf. Uh, games on my, my next shelf. One, two, three, the fourth one. All right, there's two, four, six, eight, nine games. I'll go through them now because there's a lot of games to go through. See this? It's Agricola, all creatures great and small. I have two expansions in the box. I've had this game for a long time. It's really good. Veronica likes this game so much. It's fun. It's resource, uh, no, uh, worker placement, uh, resource management. These are your workers. Um, and what you're doing is you're buying these buildings, animals. You're building a farm with these tiles. And you're building fences which look like this around your buildings and your um, fields because you want to have a whole bunch of animals in your farm, you know, like these sheep. Oh my goodness. Sheep, horses, cows, and, uh, and, uh, well, pigs. Yeah, pigs. Here's a pig. You get a pig. A pig. They look like little, uh, they look like toys. <laughs> but they're, they're nice. They're good quality. Uh, so, here's the, everybody gets a farm with a cottage on it. And then you're sending your workers out to do some stuff on this board. So you get resources like stone, wood, uh, reed, and you get animals, and you build buildings. You do it all for points. See the points, you get points at the end of the game. It's nice. It's one of those games where you have to do, <clears throat> you want to do like 12 things and you're only going to be able to do eight of them. That's how a lot of these games work. You want to do all sorts of stuff, but you're only allowed doing a small portion of what you need to do. I got to get it something. I got to put this on something. So, that's Agricola. Agricola, all, all creatures great and small. There's a different Agricola, I don't have that one. This one's called Hive. I have three, three expansions in here. It's a, uh, it comes in this little pouch thing that you can carry. I don't play this game very often. It's very chess-like. But look at the pieces, they're really good. You have black and white bugs. Everybody's got the same set. And that's a bee. The object of the game is to surround your opponent's bee with pieces. Doesn't matter if they're yours or, or they're your opponent's. So that's a bee. Can you see it? Yeah, a little bit. And if it's surrounded like so, so say it's the next player, uh, white player's turn, he's gonna take his hopper, which is a grasshopper, he's gonna hop, he go right there, and look, the bee is uh, surrounded. So you have different types of bugs, and they move differently, and you put them out on the board, you create your board, and then you can start moving them around on the board, or you put them from your stock and put them, and put them, and you make the board. It's good, it's very chess-like, so it doesn't take as long as chess. But again, I, I don't play it that often because, uh, you know, I'm not really good at it. But that's high. A two-player abstract. Another two-player game is Jambo, a two-player card game. I have two, three, two or three expansions in the box. I, a lot of expansions. Veronica really likes this game. That's why I have it. 
These are expansions. So you have these resources and your money. And there's like about a billion cards here. Look at them all. There's a whole bunch of them. And so this is hand management, uh, resource collection type thing. So you're, so this is a market. Okay, so both players have a market where you store your resources. So you're gonna put your resources in this market. And how you do that is you buy your resources. So this thing, you can buy three of these uh, metal rings for $3. And then you put them in your market. And then later on, if you see that card again, or if you have a T and a thing, you can sell what you have in your market for the higher price. For this one, you would sell it for seven. If you saw this card again, you could sell your three rings for 10. And that's how you get money. You make money. Person with the most money wins. I think you played a something or other, $45 or something like that. And then, and then uh, whoever has the most money wins. It's quite simple, but there's a lot of cards, a lot of different cards. So you have animal cards that do stuff. You have, uh, you have uh, people cards that do other stuff. And you have, uh, I can't find any right now. Utility cards, that you're allowed three utility cards. They help you do stuff. And everything costs, an everything you do costs an action. And you get like five actions on your turn. That's Jambo. Jambo means means hi, hello in Swahili. Patchwork, a two-player abstract game, very popular, very popular. Oh, I blinged mine out a bit. This is a, a, a thread I got from my mom. And this, so this game, you have money. This is money. My, uh, buttons, buttons is money. And what you're doing is uh, you're collecting these tiles. You know, that's your quilt. Okay? You're collecting those. You're paying for them uh, with this. You have to, I think you, have, you pay two, two monies. And then you go up. In this case, you go up three on the time track which uh, looks like this, see? So you move your pawn up th however many around this time. When you get to the middle, then your game is over. And you'll have a uh, bunch of these things on your quilt. And then you get money, you get money by having uh, these buttons on your quilt. The person with the most money, at the end of the game wins. Oh my gosh, it's so hard. I finished with like zero money or something. You can finish with negative, be in debt when this game's over. It's uh, not easy. Or it then, but then your opponent just like, you know, 22 bucks and you get like negative seven. Kind of a drag. I like it, it's a good game. But it's hard. That's patchwork. Another Uvi Rosenberg game. He also made Agricola all creatures great and small. Okay, here we go. What is this called? It's called In the Year of the Dragon. It's a Stefan Feld game. He also made Castles of Burgundy, which we like a lot. But this is one of his earlier games. Oh my gosh. Okay. This game... This is a game where you're just trying to stay alive. You just kind of, bad things happen in the year of the dragon. And you're just trying to survive the entire year. It takes a year to play this game. 12 months. You have these that are palaces because you, you need to have palaces because you're collecting these, uh, these guys. These are your people, you see? This is your this is your builder guy. You need him in your palace if you want to build more palaces. 
which you're gonna have to do. But the thing is, every month, bad things happen. And you have to prepare for them. That's all you, it's all you can do, you just have to prepare for them. For example, drought. When this, when this at the end of the round, uh, if there's a drought in that month, you have to feed your, you have to feed your people. If you don't feed your people, you, they, they leave, that's it. This one here, you have to pay your taxes. Yeah, this one here is a mongrel invasion that happens, and you have to account for that. Famine, like if so many bad things happen, and you have to get food for, you have to get medicine, you have to get warriors, you have to do all this stuff. But it's hard. I always say these games are hard, but this one here is really a lot of difficult choices in this game. That's the whole point. It's fun, but it's uh, brainy. Okay. King Domino, very popular game. If you like, uh, if you like playing dominoes, this is the king of dominoes. <laughs> you have different types of, of uh, tiles. They look like dominoes. They're double-sided. They have uh, land types on them. This is desert and water. You have a kingdom. This is your castle. And so uh, what you're doing is you have your castle, and then you're building around it these things yeah you see and then you're gonna get points at the end of the game for how big each of your land types are this is a land type of two uh, desert but you don't get two. Oh yeah well you get the number of uh, t uh, the number of domino types multiplied by however many uh, you can see there crowns in that type so this would be worth three points because three uh, desert types multiplied by one crown. But you can do better than that at the end of the game. So you place, yeah. What happens is that there's three of these things that come out like this. And then you place your guy on one of them and then, and then you get them. But this is the order of play. So the next round when four more come out, Green is gonna get green is gonna get the first choice because he's here. He's gonna get the first choice and then pink. This game is is not it, it's not hard. It's not hard. It's just fun. It's just fun to do. You know. The other games are fun too. But this one is just like nice, easy, breezy, fun type of game. What we call light game. Another, this is a two to four player abstract uh, strategy game called Element. A newer version of this came out, but I have the, this is like the first edition or something. The board is a very simple uh, board of squares. I don't know how, you know what, nine by nine or something, square board. Everybody gets one of these little little guys so you're whatever color you are this is your sage or mage or I don't know what they call them you put them on the board then the point of the game is you want to surround oh you want to surround the person on your left or right I don't know you want to surround his mage and how you do that is you have five actions you can do on your turn you can draw up to four of these out of this bag. These are element tokens, and there's four types. This is water, this is fire, this is wind, and there's uh, another one, which they call uh, earth. So you can build a mountain range here to um, surround your opponent. You can, you can build some fire or water Wind doesn't wind doesn't surround your opponent, so it's uh, it's strange. You can your your uh, your mage can go, and then you can move your your uh, your mage. So if this was you, you could jump over the wind, or you can move one 
as another action. You get five actions. Up, if you want to draw less tokens out of the bag, so say you don't want to draw four, you want to draw only two, then you can move your sage guy three up to three spots and just try to escape. You, you, yeah, you don't want your sage to get surrounded and you want to surround the other person's sage. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a fun game. A little bit of luck because you're drawing things out of the bag, but you have to, you have to manage it. Two more to go. This is another game Veronica liked a lot. It's another Uwe Rosenberg game. It's called At the Gates of Loyang. This is another game that's really fun. We used to play this a lot. It's just fun because what you're doing is you're farming. Look, I keep, I keep everything in these. So you have like, you're gonna plant, these are pumpkins. You're gonna plant pumpkins. You're gonna plant wheat, radishes. You have uh, beans, cauliflower. I think these are leek or broccoli or whatever. But you have here a store and you put all these things right on your board like that. Then that's how you buy them. You can buy them. But it's basically a card game. Oh, it's also, this is your own scoring track. You're going to try to go up the scoring track as far as possible. And you have a farm. You have a farm. So your farm is, well, this is your storage unit. So you can have one, you can keep one vegetable in your storage unit, or you can upgrade and get four. And this is your field. You can plant, in your field you can plant, in this case, just about anything you want, except for broccoli. So you plant your stuff in these fields. You plant your vegetables, and then at the beginning of the, of the round, I think, you harvest one vegetable from each of your fields. And then you use them to, oh yeah, you use them to deliver stuff to your customers. Oh, see that guy, he's a customer. He walks into your store and he says to you, I need to have a radish and a broccoli. And you better have a radish and a broccoli ready to give them because otherwise he's gonna get mad. Uh, you, you don't want that. So you gotta give him that. And you have to give him, uh, sell him a radish and a broccoli. And every, every time you do, he's gonna stay there for four, he's gonna come back every day for four days. And you have to, and you want him to sell him that stuff. But look, he's gonna buy five, six, seven, eight, but he's gonna give you more money every day. Weird. And you can do things like exchange and the market. They also have uh, these guys. These are casual customers. They just come in. Well, if you have it, great. If you don't, I'll wait here until you do. And then you get money. Yeah, it's really good. And then you exchange your money for points. And whoever has the most points at the end of the game is going to win. It's fun. It's really fun because you're... Uh, it's fun to take the... <laughs> It's fun to take the uh, vegetables out of your field, put them in your storage, and then so but it's but it's uh, like I mean you have to sell it you have to sell your vegetables to your customers. Otherwise you have to take out loans and stuff, it's not good. It's a really good game. Gates of Loyal. Uwe Rosenberg is a really good designer. The last one I'm going to show you now is called Thurn and Taxis. This is like Veronica's shelf. She likes all of these games. This game is, they, they say it's similar to Ticket to Ride, which I have over there, but it's a little bit different. Thurn and Taxis turns out to be two German people who delivered mail. They invented the mail system or something. See, that's a map of Germany with provinces. So what you're doing is you have a bunch of post office, these little post offices. You're gonna put them, you're gonna put them in your, in the various uh, towns and you wanna build uh, routes. See, there's a little like uh, trail that goes from one to the other. 
You do that by playing cards. See, these are cards. So this is Zurich card. So that's down over here. Oh, here's the, here's uh, here's Pilsner. It's uh, right here. So you can build you can you can build your route by playing cards, and then every card has to be follow along the route, and then you have three or more cards that you play. Then you can then you can close your route and place your buildings for points. That's basically how it goes, but. You have, in this game, the, the makes it fun is that you have to play a card. And it has to be a legally played card. If you can't legally play your card, you have to just swipe your root out. Uh, you have to close your root, but you don't get any points for it. So you really want to do your hand management stuff. So uh, you can get help from these guys to do, uh, to do your stuff. Now, I know I don't explain these games very well, oh, no, just, but that's learning taxes. And that's it. That's my next shelf. Yeah, they're really good games. So, okay, so I'm going to see you later. Okay, bye everybody.